The break-even one is very popular also. The break-even point is very popular also in the workplace. Uh, profit planning is commonly used also. And then we have this, no capital budgeting. Okay. So what are the type of capital budgeting decisions? So yung mga uh, nandun sa managerial level, you know that uh, we decide on whether we do plant expansion or not, whether we replace the equipment, no? in reducing which equipment to, um, to purchase. Uh, why do you have to choose? Because there are limitations, there are scarce resources for the organization. You don't have that enough capital. That's why you have to choose between these two options. Which of these two options will you uh, will you uh, will you choose not to? Uh, let's say, for example, you you want to buy let's in the in the hospital you 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 have, you want to to choose between buying a an MRI versus a CT scan a medical equipment because these are two examples of diagnostic equipments let's say for example mri uh, is uh, more expensive than the than the ct scan but you will have to consider the the cash flows related to the purchase of these two equipments next you want to decide on whether you just lease or you just buy do you have uh, certain options in the workplace on whether you lease or you buy. Yes. Uh, for us, let us say in the uh, for dialysis machines, you now you have uh, the options of leasing or buying. And then you have also to decide on cost production. So these are the five capital budgeting decisions. Plant expansion, equipment selection, equipment replacement, lease or buy, and then cost production. Okay, now they fall into broad into two broad categories. Okay, number one category would be the screening decisions. So the question to be answered is, does a proposed project meet some preset standard of acceptance? And then number two question that needs to be answered would be the preference decision, selecting from among several competing courses of action. Let's say, for example, you have option one, and then you have option two. Which one is the preferred project for the company? Okay. So this one, it's actually the same slide that we demonstrated. This is the time value of money. So just to repeat, a dollar today is worth more than a dollar a year from now okay that means if you receive 100 dollars today that would be different from receiving 100 dollars after one year okay so therefore projects that promise earlier returns are preferable to those that promise later returns so let's say for example now i'll give you 100 dollars after one year oh there's another one uh, I'll give you $110 after two years. So you have to make the computation, which has the higher present value. Is it 100 at the end of one year or 110 at the end of two years? Okay. Now, the capital budgeting techniques that best recognize the time value of money are those that involve the discounted cash flows. So learning objective number one, we evaluate the acceptability of an investment project using the net present value method. To determine, these are the procedures. We calculate the present value of the cash inflows. We calculate the present value of cash outflows. Well, let's say, for example, you're buying an equipment now for $100,000. That's the present value because that's what you spend today. So the present value is what you spend today for the cash outflow. And then subtract the present value of the cash outflows from the present value of the inflows. Let's see if we have an example here. Okay, so the next slide gives us a guideline on whether okay, we accept or we reject a proposed project. 
Okay, so it says here, if the net present value is, when you say net present value, it is the difference between the cash inflows and the cash outflows. Okay, so it says here, if the net present value is positive, then the project is acceptable because it promises a return greater than the required rate of return. What if the net present value is zero? It is still acceptable because it promises a return equal to the required rate of return. And when do you reject a project? It says here, if the net present value is negative, then the project is not acceptable because it promises a return less than the required rate of return. Okay, next. The net present value analysis emphasizes cash flows and not the accounting net income. So I repeat, it is not the accounting net income. We'll be dealing here with the cash flows. What's the reason for that? The reason is that accounting net income is based on accruals. And that accounting net income ignores the timing of cash flows into and out of the organization. Okay, now what are examples of cash outflows? If you will be, imagine, um, let's say, for example, you're planning to acquire you know, a medical equipment. So you will have to spend for the initial investment, that would be the purchase price. And of course, to run the medical equipment, you will have incremental operating costs. You would need working capital. And then later on, you will have to spend for repairs and maintenance. So these are examples of the cash outflows. Okay. Now, what are examples of cash inflows? Okay. So you do not just have the incremental revenues of course now when you when you when you talk of cash inflows you will have this in mind first thing that comes to your mind will be uh, the cash inflows from incremental revenues but there would be some more like for example the salvage value if i purchase a medical equipment today and let us say, for example, at the end of five years, which is the estimated useful life of the medical um, equipment, uh, there is a salvage value. So if I sell the medical equipment at the end of five years, I will receive the salvage value. So that is considered what a cash inflow. Another one, let us say, for example, I am upgrading. No, okay. So I have an old machine, but instead of deciding to repair it, uh, so I'll just buy a new one. And buying a new one would mean reducing the operating cost. So that's a considered what? A cash inflow. Okay. And then another one. Let us say, for example, at the end of the project, the working capital that you put into the project, okay, is now released. So release of working capital is considered another cash. So what are they again? Incremental revenues, deduction of costs, salvage value, and then release of working capital. Okay. Depreciation. We said um, in the previous slides no, that no, we are not dealing with the accounting net income. Instead, we're dealing with the cash inflows. And remember that depreciation is a non-cash um expense so it says here that depreciation is not deducted in computing the present value of a project for what reasons it is not a current cash outflow it doesn't require a cash payment although it is an expense and then discounted cash flow methods automatically provide for a return of the original investment Let us have an example. Carver Hospital is considering the purchase of an attachment for its X-ray machine. So the cost is 3,170. The life is four years. The salvage value is zero. The increase in annual cash inflows is 1,000. Okay, what would be my cash outflow here? The 3,170, okay? What would be my cash inflow it says here increase in annual cash inflows would be 1000 and if the life of the machine is four years therefore i stand to receive 1000 times four that's four 
thousand. Without considering the time value of money, of course, the ordinary manager would decide, yes, I'll go for it. Because this is just 3,170, then I stand to receive $4,000. So, sa unang computation mo, aba, kikita ako ng magkano, $830. But considering the time value of money, it may not be $830. No? It may be less than $830. So, no investments are to be made unless they have an annual return of at least 10%. Now, if you are the manager, Will you go for this project? To me. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes, sir. So the initial investment outflow. Okay. So this is a negative 3,170. Okay. And as I said in the previous um slides of course if you're spending 3170 and if you are paying that today the present value is 3170 so the present value factor is 1 so 3170 times 1 is 3170 negative because you're paying for it okay and then you will receive 1000 1000 every year and that is what? That is a uniform installment. Remember annuity? Okay, di ba pag bumalik ka sa 0.909, then there's another number here, second at saka third. Pag in mo yung apat, you will have 3.170. So 1,000 times 3.170. So this is now 3,170 and... No, the net present value is zero. So, exacto lang pala. No, pero sabi na ang guidelines natin kanina, if the net present value is zero, you still accept the project. Okay? And it says here, the present value of an annuity of one table. I hope you remember the computations that we made, how we arrive at 3.170. Okay? So let us have another illustration, how we recover the original investment. Tama ba na marirecover yung 3,170? Let's find out. Okay. Let us say, for example, your initial investment is 3,170. And you receive 1,000 at the end of year one. Okay. Now your 3,170 okay, incurs interest of 10%. Or earns interest of 10%. So 3,170 times 10%, that is 317. So of the total amount of 1,000 that you receive, 3,317 belongs to the interest. So how much of your investment do you recover from the 1,000? It's not 1,000. It's 1,000 minus 317. It is 683. So how much have you recovered? So how much is the unrecovered? So 3,170 minus the recovery of 683, the unrecovered portion amount is 2,487. Okay, so in the second year, you receive another 1,000. Okay, but you know that the unrecovered portion of 2,487 must earn interest of 10%. So 2,487 times 10%, that is 249. All right, so 1,000 minus 249, you are recovering 751. So how much is the unrecovered portion of your investment after two years? So 2,487 minus 751, it's now 1,736. Okay, and then 1,736, you put it here. Of course, you receive another 1,000 at the end of three years. But you know that this unrecovered portion of 1,736 earns interest of 10%. So 1,736 times 10%, this is now 173. And 1,000 minus 173, this is 827. So your unrecovered portion, the new unrecovered balance now is 1,736 
minus 827. So it's now 909. And then lastly, on the fourth year, you receive another 1,000. But this unrecovered portion of 909 earns interest of 10%. So this is 91. So 1,000 minus 91, this is 909. And exactly this becomes now zero. This turns into zero. What's the implication? The above computation implies that the cash inflows are sufficient to recover the 3,170 initial investment and to provide exactly a 10% return on the investment. So, hindi mo pwede sabi, ay, hindi naman pala ako kumita. Actually, you have a 10% return on your investment. Okay, you have a zero net present value. But it doesn't mean that you did not earn. No, you earn in terms of return on your investment. Because your investment of 3,170 earned 10%. And is that not what businessmen do? They want a return on their investment. Now, the problem here is, what if this is not your money, this 3,170 that you use to purchase the equipment? Let's say, for example, you just borrowed this from the bank. Now, therefore, if you just borrowed this from the bank, you have to compare this 10%, all right? All right with the rate that is being charged to you by the bank. Let's say, for example, the bank is charging you 10%. Then you just have here a break even. So the rate that is being charged by the bank must be less than the 10% return on the investment. All right? So two simplified assumptions are usually made in the net present value analysis. And number one assumption would be that all cash flows other than the initial investment occur at the end of previous. That's why I, I, I say I receive 1,000 at the end of year one. I receive another 1,000 at the end of year two. That's the first assumption. And then all cash flows generated by an investment project are immediately reinvested at a rate of return equal to the discount rate. Okay, so next. Choosing a discount rate. So, anong gagamitin kong discount rate? So, paano ko mapipili si 10%, si 12%, si 14%? Now, the firm's cost of capital is usually regarded as the minimum required rate of return. And the cost of capital is the average rate of return the company must pay to its long-term creditors and stockholders for the use of their funds. I think we have a... a a separate chapter for this. No? Yung, um, remember WAC, what's, what's WACC? A weighted average, average cost, of cost of capital. capital. Tama ba yun? WACC. Yeah. Yes, po. Uh -huh. So it refers to the average rate of return the company must pay to its long-term creditors and the stockholders for the use of their funds. All right. So let's have another um Example, Lester Company has been offered a five-year contract to provide component parts for a large manufacturer. Okay, so cost of the special equipment, you will pay for this $160,000. And then you will have to invest working capital for this project. This is $100,000. And then after three years, you will have to spend another $30,000. Okay, what are these? Are these cash inflows or cash outflows for you? These are what? Outflows. Outflows. Okay, you spend 160, you spend for 100, you spend for 30. But it says here, the salvage value of equipment in five years. So this 5,000 returns to you, correct? Returns to you, this 5,000. At the end of the project, useful life. Now, the annual cash revenue and cost, the sales revenue from parts, that would be 750000 Cost of parts sold, that's 400000 And then salaries, shipping, and so on, that's 270000 So uh, what, what would be your net cash inflow here? It's 750 minus 400 minus 270. Okay? Now, at the end of five years, the working capital will be released and may be used elsewhere by Lester. Sabi natin kanina, no, yung, 
yung 5,000 you receive it at the end of five years. But knowing the present value concept, you know that the 5,000 that you receive after five years is no longer 5,000. The value today of that 5,000 is not 5,000. It is sub substantially lower. Okay, next. Lester Company uses a discount rate of 10%. So should Lester Company accept the contract? Okay, let's find out what would be the net cash inflow from this project. I said that the net cash inflow would be 750,000 sales revenue minus the cost of parts sold of 400,000 minus salaries, shipping, and other expenses of 270,000. So you would just be receiving here 80,000 net cash inflow. Let's, have, let's go to the next slide. Okay. How much are you going to invest? Okay. Uh, we mentioned we invest, we spend here for three items, right? Diba, we invest on the equipment, that's 160,000. And if you are investing now, the present value factor is one. So 160,000 times one, that's 160,000. Another cash outflow, you would have to invest working capital for this project. And you are investing here 100,000. The present value factor, if you are investing now, that's 100,000 times one, that is 100,000. And then, okay, the annual net cash inflows, oh, this is now a cash inflow. In the previous slide, we computed for 80,000. And if the amount is uniform over a period of five years, we'll use the annuity factor. We have computed for this 3.791 in our previous uh, demonstration of the time value of money. So 80,000 times 3.791, you will actually receive 303,280. Meron pa bang nawawala dito? Meron marami pa, no? Okay. Like for example, you will have another cash outflow at the end of the third year. This is the repair no, of, or shall we say, the relining of equipment. And the present value factor of 10% for three periods, the one that we have demonstrated is 0 0.751. So 30,000 times 0 0.751, this is 22,500. 30. Meron pang other factors? Meron pa that we need to consider. Di ba meron pang salvage value? Meron pang yung working capital ibabalik mo na at the end of the project. Okay, so this is the salvage value that you receive at the end of 5 years. The present value factor of 10% for 5 periods is 0.621. So you multiply, you get your 3105. Meron pa? Ayan. Of course, the working capital is returned to you at the end of five years. So 100,000 times 0 0.621, this is 62,100. This is a net present value of 85,955. So are you going to accept the project or you reject the project? Accept the contract because the project has a positive net present value of course um the presentation uh in the previous um slides could be quite different like for example you could present all uh, cash inflows less the cash outflows and then you will have the difference a positive eighty five thousand nine hundred fifty five. in this presentation they are presented these items as they occur now so the investment the in equipment, the investment in working capital, and then the regular cash inflows. And then after three years, you have the repair of the equipment. And after five years, receiving the salvage value and then returning the working capital to you. Okay, can we proceed? Okay, Any so this is, ah, yes, do you have questions? Uh, may I chat po sa Zoom, sir. Ah, 
a question here, what if the equipment suddenly needs repair? How would you compute for it? Well, these are the things, th these are the actual uh, costs. No? Of course, you wouldn't know that no, if you are deciding today. No? So if you want, no, you can include the, that in your projection that, for example, you would need repair. So in the workplace, what we do is we can allot, no? let's, say, let's say, for example, uh, 3% or 5% of the equipment cost for the uh, yung sinasabi mo nga na sudden repair no, of the um, equipment. Kasi di ba, if you have been um, operating, let us say, for 3 years or 5 years, you have a history of your repairs already. No? Like for example, kami no, sa hospital, we will know that other than yung mga regular repairs namin, meron kaming extra 2% or 3% or 5%. No budget for uh, sudden repairs no, of the equipment. Did I answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. So let's proceed. Ayan. So this is the Excel file. This is just another way of showing the, the computation. Remember yung kanina, yung annual net cash inflows, di ba? Ang ginamit niya yung annuity factor for five years. Ano yon? Yung point, sorry, this is the 3.791. No? Okay. Pero kung gusto mo ng long computation, gamitin mong isa-isa. Like 80,000 multiplied by 0 0.909. Di ba ito yung na-compute natin mga factors kanina? 80,000 times 0.826. 80,000 times 0 0.751, 0 0.683, saka 0 0.621. Okay, so this is another way of uh, computing it. If you want no, a longer uh, computation, kung gusto mong individually. Now, uh, you will be required to use this kung hindi uniform yung 80,000 per year. Like for example, this is 80,000, 75,000, 70,000. Another 80, this is 90. So, hindi yung pwedeng gamitin si uh, 3.791. Alright? So, let's have a quick check. Benny Associates has been offered a four-year contract to supply the computing requirements no, for a local bank. So, this is a purchase of um, equipment. So, cost of computer equipment would be 250 thousand outflow inflow outflow okay working capital required that would be initially an outflow that's twenty thousand and then oh ito na naman upgrading of the equipment in two years that's ninety thousand and yes in the workplace you encounter this no like uh sa amin yung um do you know yung tomotherapy equipment have you heard of the tomotherapy equipment? Who's heard of that? Mm -hmm. oh, it's a cancer radiation equipment. It's the ano, it's the latest in um, cancer radiation. Kasi di ba mayroon yung, yung mga old methods of ano, radiation. Tapos, the, one hospital in, uh, in Angeles, they offered yung, ano, yung linear accelerator. Pero yung linear accelerator kasi, Halimbawa, gagawa siya ng radiation. Parang nasusunog yung other parts of the body. Diba? Pero yung tomotherapy equipment, plugging to, ha, na meron si, ano, si, si Mother Teresa of Calcutta. So kung ano lang talaga yung, yung cancer area. So very exact, very accurate siya. Ayan. So that tomotherapy, tomotherapy equipment, no? so it's the latest ha, in, uh, in cancer ano, radiation. Uh, I remember after three years, meron kang bibilhin na, ano, na, na important component ng equipment. So maybe it's this one, no? upgrading of equipment in two years. O kaya yung mga software na ginagamit, so you will have to spend for another, sabi nga niya dito, 90,000. And then salvage value of equipment in four years, that's 10,000. Would it be an out, would this be an outflow or inflow? Inflow. Inflow, diba? And then the annual net cash inflow is 120,000. And it says here that the working capital returns to you at the end of the 
contract. Pero if 20,000 is the turning to you, you know that at the end of the, the life of this project, you know, that 20,000, the present value of the 20,000 is not 20,000. It's lower than 20,000. And what's the required rate of return? It is 14%. Now, what is the net present value of the contract with the local bank? Okay, isaisahin muna natin. Ayan. So, kung 14%, okay, yung cost of computer equipment, the present value of that, if you're paying that now, that's times one, no? The present value is 250,000. You agree? The working capital required is 20,000 times one again. Pero itong upgrading of equipment in two years, that's 90,000 times the present value factor. Okay, so ano gagamitin mo? Yung 14%, ano yung on the second year, ni 14%. And then ito, salvage value of equipment in five, in four years. So this returns to you, no? So 10,000 times the present value factor on that fourth year. Or what about this? Uniform yung ano eh, yung annual net cash inflow, 120,000. Ilang beses mong mare-receive yung 120,000? Sabi dito, it's a four-year contract. So, 120,000 times four dapat, no? Okay. Pero anong gagamitin mo dito? Yung present value factor or yung annuity? Yung total, no? Yung sum ng apat na present value factors. Bakit? Kasi uniform naman ang pagre-receive mo ng 120,000. Okay? So, so just to go, to go back to that, no? Let's look at 14%. Ayan. Kasi sa akin kasi madali siya. Ginagawa ko sa trabaho. Eh. Of course, yung mga baguhan, yung mga non-accountants, it could be difficult for them. O oh, yun, ito yung 14%. No? So 1 over 1 plus 0.14 raised to the 1. Ayan. In fact, if we're using Excel, Dito sa formula ng Excel, you can uh, easily compute now for this. Ayan. So, 0 0.877, 0 0.769, 0 0.675, and 0 0.592. Kung uniform yung 120,000 no, for uh, four years, so, itotal mo na lang yung apat. You get 2.914. When we were taking the board exam, di ba sabi ko sa inyo yung Yung ordinary, uh, oh, there's another question. If, if, is there a table where you can find that? For? Yeah, um, actually, you can Google the table or I can send it to you yung from the uh, managerial account. But it's easy. I, I think it's in Google, yung, ano, yung table for present value factors. Pero, kung ako, pero ako, I'm not using ano, Google eh. or I'm not using the table. No? I, I do my ano, computation. Para mas madali sa akin if I just compute. Or just use Excel. No? Di ba meron sa Excel, lagay mo lang yung present value of these numbers. Meron? Have you tried that, guys? Excel has. Okay, so let's continue with this. So what is the net present value of the contract with the local bank? Ito yun. Oh, let's start here. Bago to, ha? Okay. So how much are you going to invest? 250,000 times the present value factor of one. Why? Because you are spending this today. So another one, the working capital, you are spending it today. So 20,000 times one. Okay. Ito naman, yung annual net cash inflows, yung four years, no? It's 2.914 times 120,000. That's 349680. Saan galing si 2. 914. Ayan, ito. If I add this 4, 0 0.877, 0 0.769, 0 0.675, and 0.592, I get 2.914. Okay, and then... Of course, I'll spend for the upgrading of the equipment after two years. So the present value factor is 0.769. So that's 90,000 times 0.769. 
And then the salvage value of equipment, I received that at the end of four years. And the present value factor, 0.592. And then the working capital will be returned to me at the end of four years. So again, that's 0.592 multiplied by 20,000. That's 11,840. So lahat ng mga negative at saka positive, ayan, pagsamasamahin mo, you will have a net present value of 28,200. 30. Will you accept the project? Of course, no, you will accept the project. Okay, if you want a longer computation, kahit um, uniform yung 120,000, you want to treat them individually. So gagamitin mo yung kanya-kanyang present value factor. Ayan. You will arrive at the same uh, net present value, of course, with um, a few dollar difference. No? That, the surrounding difference. So 28,156. Here it's 28,230. All right. Now, learning objective number two, we evaluate the acceptability of an investment project using the internal rate of return. So this is now the IRR. What is it? What do you mean by the internal rate of return? Now, the internal rate of return is the um, rate of return that is promised by an investment project over its useful life. It is computed by finding the discount rate that will cause the net present value of a project to be zero. So ito na yata yung gagamit ka talaga ng table. No? It works very well if a project's cash flows are identical every, every year. If the annual cash flows are not identical, a trial and error process must be used to find the internal rate of um, return. So the, what, what's the general decision rule? No? If the internal rate of return is equal to or greater than the minimum required rate of return, then the project is acceptable. Okay, I repeat, if the IRR is equal to or greater than the minimum required rate of return. Parang tingnan mo, no? like for example, kung makakautang ka sa banko sa 5%, at sa tingin mo, yun ang yung required rate of return. Kasi you should be earning more than that, di ba? So the IRR must be greater than that 5% for the project to be acceptable. Okay? And if the IRR is less than the minimum required rate of return, then the project must be rejected. When using the internal rate of return, the cost of capital acts as a hurdle rate that the project must clear for acceptance. Okay, let us have an example. L later, I, I will have a question to the... So the CPAs, yeah. I, I had a no, bad experience on a no, capital budget in dealing with another professor. Hindi ko siya alam kung paano siya explain um, sa kanila. Later, I'll ask a question. Now, Decker Company can purchase a new machine at a cost of 104320 that will save $20,000 per year in cash operating cost. The machine has a 10-year life. Do you understand the problem? The cost is 104,320. No? Then you will have savings of 20,000. Di ba sabi natin kanina, if you have uh, savings, that would be considered as cash inflows. The future cash flows are the same every year in this example. So we can calculate the internal rate of return as follows. So ano daw kanya internal rate of return? Ayan. First, you compute for the present value factor for the internal rate of return. Okay, so investment required over the annual net cash inflows. As simple as that, no? Okay, so 104,320, where did I get that? That's the cost of the machine to be purchased, okay? And then, magkano daw ang marireceive ko every year? That's 20,000. So, anong nakuha ko? It's 5.216. Okay? Now, the next step is this. Ayan. If you are looking at the table, yung sinasabi natin kaninang you can Google or you check at the back of the managerial accounting book. Ayan. So, punta ka dun sa periods na 10 at saka dun sa rate na 14%. Of course, this is a very simple illustration. No? Exacto yung 
uh, one six, no? Okay, for easier illustration to to us, no? So pag nakita mo si point five two one six, nandito siya, no? So ang ibig sabihin, sabi niya dito, no? Find the ten period row, move across until you find the factor five point two one six. Now look at the top of the column and you find a rate of fourteen percent, no? So this is five point two one six. This is 14% for 10 periods. Okay, so what is your IRR? It is 14%. So let, let's let's repeat the procedures. Uh. First, you apply this uh, formula. Now compute for the present value factor for the IRR. How is it computed? The investment required over the annual net cash flows. Okay, and you, you get 5.216. That's the PV factor. Then look at the table PV factor of 5.216 refers to 14% for 10 periods. Okay? So, Decker Company can purchase a new machine at a cost of 104,320 with no cash inflows or savings of 20,000 per year in cash operating costs. The machine has a 10-year life and the IRR as computed is 14%. So if the internal rate of return is equal to or greater than the company's required rate of return, then the project is acceptable. All right? So ano ba yung acceptable sa atin dito? Is it 14%? So if it is 14%, then we proceed no, with the project. Okay. Now let's have a quick check. The expected annual net cash inflow from a project is $22,000 over the next five years. The required investment now in the project is $79,310. Now, what is the IRR of the project? Oh, using the formula kanina, magkano ba yung investment? $79,310. That's the numerator. The denominator is $22,000. Okay, pag nakuha mo na yung PV factor, hanapin mo sa table. So it says here it is 3.605, which is the present value factor for an annuity over five years where the interest rate is 12%. Okay? So parang working back, no? Okay. Of course, no, for, for accountants, guys, no, yung mga problems na ginagamit na namin sa CPA board, Siyempre, hindi naman siya eksaktong 3.05. No? So, hindi naman siya eksaktong makukuha mo dun sa, sa table. No? So, there would be other computations. Okay? So, comparing the net present value and the IRR methods. Now, which is simpler? So, the net present value is often simpler to use. So, would you go for the first one? Di ba kanina, di ba yung present value ang ginagamit natin? Ngayon naman yung IRR. Sino daw ang mas gusto mo dyan? No? Okay. So, sinasabi niya dito that the first method, NPV, is simpler to use. And then there is this questionable assumption that is stated here. The IR, the internal rate of return method assumes cash inflows are reinvested at the internal rate of return. Expanding the net present value method. To compare competing investment projects, we can use the following net present value approaches. You can use the total cost or the incremental cost. Okay, so this is a further illustration of the net present value no? uh, lesson or method. Okay, let us have an example. The total cost approach. Right company has two alternatives, remodel an old car wash or remove it and install a new one. The company uses a discount rate of 10%. What are your options? No, you just have the, the old machine um, repaired. Second option is you sell that old no, machine, you buy a new one. And of course, buying a new one would be lesser uh, operating cost for and maybe a higher efficiency for the new machine, therefore more revenues. Okay, so other information. This is the column for new car wash. This is the column for old car wash. The annual revenues, naturally the new car wash would have higher revenues. That's 90,000. 
70,000 revenues for the old car wash. And then here, the annual cash operating cost, that's 30,000 for the new, and then 25,000 for the old. So the annual net cash inflows would be 60,000 and then 45,000. Okay, so this is now the total cost approach. Uh, let's see how that is done. If White installs a new washer, okay, cost is 300,000, the productive life is 10 years, the salvage value is 7,000, you have um, a major replacement, a major repair at the end of six years, that's 50,000. And then there's the salvage of old equipment. That is, before you buy a new one, you sell the old one. So, mabibenta mo siya, meron kang cash inflow na 40,000. Let's look at the present value of this alternative. Ayan. So with that, of course, you will invest 300,000. If you're investing now, the present value factor is one. So that's 300,000 times one, that's 300,000. Okay. Next, replace brushes. At the end of sixth year, you will have to spend another 50,000. Of course, you know that the present value factor, okay, of 10% for six periods would be 0.564. This can be computed. So 50,000 times 0 0.564, that's 28,200. You have uniform cash inflows. That would be 60,000. Kapag uniform, pwede mong gamitin yung annuity factor. That's 6.145 multiplied. You get 68,700. And I said, if you are disposing the old equipment, that would be considered a cash inflow. And you are disposing it today. So 40,000 times 1, that's 40. And then the new equipment will have a salvage value you know, at the end of its life, which is 7,000. And the present value factor at the end you know, or for 10 years is 0.386. So adding and deducting, you get a net present value of 83,200. So if we install the new washer, no, the investment will yield a positive net present value of 83,202. But what about if we choose the first option? What's the first option? No, or the other option, you will not buy the new washer. No, you will just go for the repair of the old washer. Let us see if that is demonstrated here. Of course, this is the expanded computation of that. So if white remodels the existing washer, so ito yung remodeling lang, no? Okay. So the remodeling cost would be 175,000 and then magkakaroon din siya ng replacement, no? Another major repair of 80,000 at the end of 6 years. So ano yung kanyang computation? Okay. So ito lang ang mangyayari. The remodeling cost or the repair today, so that's times 1, that's 175,000. And then there's another major repair at the end of six years. So the present value factor there is 0.564 multiplied by 80,000. Magkano ang kikitain niya every year? Mas maliit, no? 45,000. Multiplied by the present value factor of 6.145, times 6.145. This is now 276.525. Okay, so the net present value if you decide for remodeling, 56,405. Which one, which option will give you the higher net present value? Sabi natin kanina, if you decide to buy a new one, net present value will be 83,202. If you decide to just remodel the old one, okay, so it's 56,405. So which option do you prefer? Or would you, go, would you go for? Of course, it is buying a new one. Okay? That's the total cost approach. Now here, you are comparing 83.202 and 56.405. So the net advantage of investing in a new washer would be 26,797. That's the total cost approach. Okay? And I guess the uh, succeeding slides will uh, demonstrate to us 
the other approach, which is the incremental approach. Okay, so under the incremental approach, you can use this also. Only those cash flows that differ between the two alternatives are considered. Let's look at this um, analysis. No? Let's say, for example, no? let us say the incremental investment. I guess this 125,000 is the difference between the uh, purchase price of the new machine versus the remodeling cost of the old machine. So assuming that is 125,000. Okay, next. Um, I guess this 30,000 is the difference no, between what? The major repair for the new machine and the major repair for the old machine. And then 15,000 is the difference on the net cash inflows between the two options. And then the salvage value of all the equipment is also here, that's 40,000. Because if you go for um, for buying no, the new machine, you will have this 40,000. And you will have the salvage value of that, which is 7,000. So what's the difference? Using the incremental cost approach, it's, it is 26,797. Let's go back to the total cost approach. It is how much? It is 26,797 also. So you can choose which approach. Uh, for me, uh, the first approach, the total cost approach would be simpler. All right. So this is the expanded you know, computation. And then let's have a quick check. Consider the following alternative projects. Each project would last for five years. So for project A, the initial investment is 80,000. The annual net cash inflows is 20,000. The salvage value is 10,000. For project B, you will have a lower initial investment of 60,000, annual net cash inflows of 16, then the salvage value is 8,000. If the discount rate is 14%, which of the following statements is true? So, kailangan compute mo. Okay? So, tingnan natin, magkano ba yung outflow ni A? 80,000. Okay, ano yung inflows? 20,000 times the annuity and 10,000 times the PV factor. Okay? Si B, ganun din ang gagawin natin. Let's look at the computation. Ayan. So differences in cash flows, sabi niya, so ang ginagamit niya dito yung, yung incremental approach. No? Okay. Tignan nga natin how much is the difference. Ayan. So if you go for project A, sabi niya, no? okay. so yun ang ano natin, ha? project A versus project B. If we go for project A, you will have to spend more, no? which is 20000 Correct? Okay, the present value factor is one. Okay, and then if you go for A, your cash inflow should be higher by 4,000. That's 20 minus 16. Okay, so that's 4,000 multiplied by the annuity of 3.433. And then if you go for A, you will have a higher salvage value. That's 2,000. And the present value factor of 14% for five years is 0.519. Okay? So the difference in net present value is negative 5,230. That means going for A, option A or project A, you would have a lesser, a lesser net present value. So what's the answer? The answer is B. No, the net present value of B is greater than A, which is 5,230, which is by 5,230. So that's just an illustration of the incremental cost approach. Okay? So we proceed. Um, this cost decisions. In decisions where revenues are not directly involved, managers should choose the alternative that has the least total cost from a present value perspective, let's look at the home furniture companies. 
Now, home furniture company is trying to decide whether to overall an old delivery truck now or purchase a new one. What are the two options? You repair the old truck or you purchase a new truck. And the discount rate is 10%. Now, we are now deciding here on the uh, cost. No? So we prefer the option that gives us the least cost. So here is the information about the trucks. For the old truck, you overall, no, you overall the old truck and you spend four thousand five hundred. Now the operating cost for this would be ten thousand. The salvage value in five years is two fifty. The salvage value now is nine thousand. Okay, what's the overall cost now? Is it an outflow or inflow? That is an outflow. Okay, another outflow. The annual operating cost. Pero ito, salvage value in five years, this returns to you eh, in 250. Or in salvage value now, this returns to you also. Now, there's the other option. Now, the other option is you just buy a new truck. No? So the purchase price is 21,000. The annual operating cost is lower than 6,000 compared to 10,000 here. And your salvage value in five years would be 3,000. Let's look at the computation. Buying the new truck, what will be your net present value? Okay, like the purchase price is um, twenty-one thousand. Ayan, that's twenty-one thousand. The present value factor now is one. Okay, and then your annual operating cost would be six thousand. Okay, this is three point seven nine one. This is the annuity. Why? Because this is uniform per year, that is 6,000 per year. And you get here negative 22,746. Now, the salvage value of the old truck, I said this is an inflow. So 9,000 times, you're, do, you're receiving it now, so that's 9,000. And then the salvage value, no, uh, here is 3,000 times 0. 0.621, this is 1,800. This refers to the, to the new truck. No? You will have a salvage value of 3,000. It's given there. Okay. So the net present value here is 32,883. That's your net cost. Huh? This is your net cost, 32,883. Okay. Now, if you go for the old truck, this is what you get. No? Of course, you will have the retail of 4,500. Spending it today would mean four, five times one. That's 4,500. You will have to spend for a uniform 10,000 per year. So you use the present value, the annuity of 3.791. And then the salvage value, you know, after five years is 250 multiplied by the PV factor, okay, here. So what's the net present value here of this cost? 42,255. Which one is lower? This one, 32,883. This is the expanded computation. Okay? So, sino yung pipiliin mo? Home furniture should purchase the new truck. Why? Using the least cost method, okay, buying a new truck would have would cost you 32,883 net present value versus remodeling the old truck. Now that would cost you 42,255. So what's the net advantage of going to the option of buying the new truck? It's 9,370. So that's another way of uh, deciding. Now you check on the least cost. So the option that gives you the lesser cost you go for that option. Let's have a quick check. Okay, Bay Architects is considering a drafting machine that would cost $100,000. Last four years provide annual cost savings of 10,000 and considerable intangible benefits each year. How large in cash terms would the intangible benefits have to be per year to justify investing in the machine if the discount rate is 14%? So iba naman ng computation no, na hinihingi sa atin dito. No? How much would be the cost? 100,000. No? Tapos ang annual cost savings mo is 10,000. 
pero meron ka pa raw ibang mare-receive no na benefits and according to this uh, problem these are the intangible benefits so magkano daw yung intangible benefits na na iyon no if you would receive them on a per year basis okay so this is a process of uh work back uh. okay let's look at the uh, computation okay. so ito yung computation niya investment in machine that's 100,000 you're investing it today that's one that's 100,000 meron ka daw uh, uniform cash inflows okay for four years so the annuity is 2.914 this is 29.142 okay and then the net present value is 70,860 if you just consider the two no but what if we make it zero so i go to the here to the portion here itong ibabang computation if i make it zero so makan in difference to dit sa gitna 70,800 60. So yung 70,860, this refers to the value of the other benefits na hindi natin alam. And no, kung uniform mo siyang mare-receive per year, you use the same press annuity factor. So working back, 70,860 divided by 2.914. So the value of that annual intangible benefits would be 24,300. Okay, so the problem was just made uh, a little bit complicated. It's just a working back. No, but we're using the same uh, steps. Now, we go to learning objective number three. As you have observed, no, palaging 60,000 per year for four years or 20,000 per year for 10 years. And for that, we're using the annuity. Di ba ina-add natin yung mga PV? factors okay for learning objective number three we evaluate an investment project that has uncertain cash flows so kung uncertain yung cash flows kukunin mong isa-isa yung mga present value factors ang ibig sabihin ayan so if, if if you see my Excel file, let's say for example for 12%, ginagamit ko ngayon yung 0 0.893, 0 0.797, 0 0.712. Hindi yung dito, hindi yung annuity factor, hindi yung sum. Okay? So let's go back there. Okay, let us have an example. Assume that all of the cash flows related to an investment in a super tanker have been estimated except for its salvage value in 20 years. Using a discount rate of 12%, management has determined that the net present value of all the cash flows except the salvage value is a negative 1.04 million. How large would the salvage value need to be to make this investment attractive? Ito yung uncertain cash flows. The net present value to be offset is 1,040. The present value factor is 0 0.104. So this is 10 million. This equation can be used to determine that if the salvage value of the super tanker is at least 10 million, then the net present value of the investment would be positive and therefore acceptable. Okay. So, tanggali ah. Let's have... Uh, Let's skip this real options. Ito na. Ito na lang. Now, learning objective number four. Rank investment projects in order of preference. So we mentioned kanina that there are two categories of decisions that you make. One is a screening decision. Another one is preference decision. Ayan. So nandito na tayo ngayon sa preference decision. Like for example, you have three options. So alin dito ang gagawin ko si option 1, option 2, or option 3. O, oh, i-rank natin sila. No? Okay, how do we rank? First, we use the internal rate of return method. When using the internal rate of return method to rank the computing investment, or oh, the, the higher the IRR, the more desirable the project. Then you can use also the net present value method. 
Okay, the net present value of one project cannot be directly compared to the net present value of another project unless the investments are equal. So sinasabi niya, no, if you rank no certain projects, it is not correct to compare the net present value amounts if the projects do not have the same investment amount. Okay, let's say for example, the investment for one machine is 100 billion, another machine is 50 million. Naturally, diba, you don't compare no, the net present value because expected mo, yung 100 million investment would have a higher net present value. Okay? So let's go to the ranking of investment projects. The formula for the project profitability index is this. So the net present value of the project over the investment required. Why? Why are we computing for the project profitability index? Kasi hindi nga pareho kasi yung investment mo. Yung isa, 10,000 ang investment mo. Si project B, 5,000 ang yung investment. Okay, now applying this formula, no, the net present value of the project over the investment required, like in this case, no, 1,000 divided by 10,000, your profitability index is 10%. For project B, the net present value is 1,000, but your investment is 5,000. So your profitability index is 20%. So if you will have to decide between these two projects, so, sino ang mas mataas ang profitability? Mas mataas ang profitability ni Project B. Kasi if you just compare the net present, oh, they have the same present values. 1,000 for A, 1,000 for B. But mind you, you don't have similar amounts no, for your investment. You are investing more for Project A. Okay? So, why not go for the profitability index and you will find out that this one has a higher profitability index and that is project b okay now there are other approaches to capital budgeting decisions the other methods of making capital budgeting are the payback method and the simple rate of return ito yung mas ano madaling capital budgeting decisions no kaya lang dito sa chapter discussion natin mas inuna yung uh, may mga present value uh, factors no, or computations. Okay. Now, let us have the payback. What's the meaning of payback? No, in how many years can you have a return of your investment? Like, for example, no, if uh, I invested 100,000, okay, nakaka-receive ako ng 20,000 per year without considering the time value of money or oh, edi kung 20,000 per year times 5 that's 100,000. My payback is 5 years. Na ibalik yung 100,000 ko in 5 years. Oh that's very simple. Now without considering the time value of money. So, how do you define the payback? No? Or it says here, what is the payback period? It is the length of time that it takes for a project to recover its initial cost out of the cash receipts that it generates. When the annual net cash inflow is the same each year, this formula can be used to compute the payback period. Like the one that I mentioned, no, 20,000 per year. So ang gagawin mo, 100,000 divided by 20,000. My payback period is five years. Management at the Daily Grind wants to install, install an espresso bar in its restaurant. The espresso bar, the cost is 140000 and it has a 10-year life. Magkano yung annual net cash inflows? 35000 So what's your payback period? 140000 divided by 35000 Would the answer be 5000 Management requires a payback period of five. So 140,000 divided by 35,000, dapat five, no? Or no less than five. Let's compute ito, four, no? So if you require five and you are able to recover in four, therefore that's, you decide, you go for the project. No, according to the company's criterion, management would invest 
in the espresso bar because its payback period is less than the required payback period of five years. Let's have a quick check. Okay. Consider the following two investments. Ayan. Kung ang pinagbabatayan mo yung payback period, syempre you go for the project that would give you a shorter, no? a lesser payback period. Oh, compute nga ito. Ito, madali na ito. You can compute. There's no present value factor. Kaya lang dito, hindi kasi siya equal. Eh. Di ba? Oh. Sino ang mas konte ang payback period which is the shorter payback period is it x or y magkano ang investment mo kay x 100,000 tapos daw mayroon kang cash inflow na 60 cash inflow na 40 okay tapos zero or if i ask you ganun accountants no kailan mo mare-recover yung 100,000 in how many years and the answer is Kailan mo mare-recover? Kung nandit tausan ng investment mo, eh, magkano mare-recover mo after one year? 60. Magkano mare-recover mo after, no, on the second year? 40. So, na-recover mo na ba yung 100,000 in two years? Yes, sir. Yes, the answer is... Yes, okay. Or what about here? Ito, 100,000. Pero marirecover mo dito, 60. Tapos 35. No? O tapos, ito may makukuha ka pang 25,000 eh. O ikaw, kung ikaw ang manager, anong mas gusto mo sa dalawa? Project X. Mas gusto mo si Project X, di ba? Ako si Y. Yes, yes ma'am. Kasi si X, wala na ako mare-receive after. Diba? E si Y, meron pa ako mare-receive na 25,000. That, that's why you, you need this ano, eh, management accounting tools. Eh, diba? So kung payback period lang ang pagbabatayan mo, talagang you go for project X. Kasi nga tinatawin, which project has the shortest payback period? Of course, you go for project X. No? But looking at the whole scenario, I'll go for project Y. Diba? Gamitan ko pa ng ano, present value computations. Okay? So that's X. Oh, ito na yung tanong. Which project do you think is better? Sagot. Wala siyang sagot. Kasi it depends on you nga. Diba? So, I would prefer project Y. Kasi konti-konti lang ang difference yun. Eh. Yung 5,000 nasa 14 to 10. Year 14 to 10, sabi ko. Tsaka sakto lang kung bumulik sa X. Pero my God, sandali. Uh, year 14. Sa so year 14 pa pala niya makukalit. I don't know. <laughs> Two years. Hindi ko lang kung value na 25,000 na after 14 years. So ito. Let's have the evaluation of the payback method. Ayan. Of course, you know, no, with that, nahirapan tayo mag-decide here which one is the better project. Kasi nga, it ignores the time value of money. So, sasabihin mo, on the 14th year, makakatanggap pa ako ng another 25,000. Eh, pero ano yung 25,000 after 14 years? Tatlong beses na nagpalit ng presidente, no? It ignores the time value of money and then ignores cash flows after the payback period. Yan pang gano'n. Oh, but uh, payback has strengths, no? Okay, so what are those strengths of the payback period? Of course, number one is simple. It's simple to do. Now, another one is serves as a screening tool, identifies investments that recoup cash investments quickly, and then identifies products that recoup initial investment quickly. Right? Payback and an even cash flows. Ayan, ito, oh. First year, you recover 1,000. Second year, you recover zero. Third year, you recover 2,000, 1,000, and then 500. Yun ba yung mga binabasa ko? Iba yata. Ito, instead, the unrecovered investment must be tracked year by year. All right? So, let's have an example. If a project requires an initial investment of 4,000 and provides an even net cash inflows, 
in five years, the investment would be fully recovered in year four. Ayan. So ito, you are recovering 4,000 na. <clears throat> so one, three, four. So in year four, you have fully recovered a million 4,000. Okay. Now let's go to learning objective six, compute the simple rate of return for an investment. Ayan. So ito yung mga, madali lang naman yung computation, you can apply this in uh, your own work. So the simple rate of return does not focus, focus on cash flows, rather they focus on the accounting net operating income. Ayan. The following formula is used to calculate the simple rate of return. What's the formula? The numerator is the annual incremental net operating income over your initial investment. Should be reduced by any salvage from the sale of the old equipment. Let us have an example. Management of the daily grind wants to install an espresso bar in its restaurant. The cost is 140000 and has a 10-year life. This will generate revenues of 100000 and expenses this time, including the depreciation, expenses of 65,000. Magkano ang ano mo dito? Net income mo dito. 100 minus 65, that is 35,000. Right? Now, what is the simple rate of return? It's 35,000. That's your net income divided by your investment of 140,000. So, yung rate of return mo is 25%. Okay? Now, there are also criticisms no, for the simple rate of return. The shortcomings are this, again, it ignores the time value of money. And then the same project may appear desirable in some years and undesirable in other years. Y yan yung normal na ginagawa natin eh, when we're doing ano, comparative financial statements. Diba yung 2018 mo, ganito, 18%. Yung 2019 mo, bigla-bigla naging... 10%, iba-iba. No? The same project may appear desirable in some years and undesirable in other years. Now, what is important is a post-audit. We are given this uh, management accounting tools. No? So we can uh, do the function or the management function of control no? and monitoring. What do we do? There is a post-audit. A post-audit is a follow-up after the project has been completed to see whether or not expected results were actually realized. 